Hello guys, this is Good Like, and we're back to Let's Code. I'm listening to music, but you'll never know, because I'm not putting it in the video. Uh, I did need to reduce it a little bit, because it was getting a bit out of hand. Anyway, last time, I don't remember what we did, uh, something, something, uh, finished the first story, or whatever. We started on the second one this time. You can see we're doing quite a bit of progress quite quickly now. Ah, so let's review what did I do this time. Okay, so I renamed something. Oh, big deal. Nothing happened here. More interesting things. I started implementing a YouTube video because our next story is related specifically to listing playlist videos. So let's see, what do we have? I reused the result interface because it's sufficient right now, but that doesn't mean that we will continue to use it. I might completely drop it and do something else, but it's good enough for now, and uh, that's why I'm using it. So this is very similar to the search result in implementation. The only difference is the item that's retrieved is a playlist item, and unfortunately, I don't think that they share a common uh, ancestor, because, well, they kind of don't. And the video ID actually has to be retrieved via resource ID instead of just directly being in a snippet of all things. It's quite a pain. I'll, you'll see maybe in the uh, JSONs that I added later on. Anyway, this is the class. These are the tests. Very, very simple. Very, very trivial. I did add the mocks. So there you go. As you can see, you need to resource. And I did add the kind, even though we don't really check it. And the video that I used is my How to Cheat at Osa video, my favorite video of all time. Yeah, you, you can see the link even here if you want to watch it, but you'll have to build it yourself. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, let's see, what did I do next? I implemented basic playlist functionality. What does that even mean? Oh, I added one uh, library because I realized that I'm using Java 8 and there's some really good things in Java 9. But I don't want to go to Java 9 because it's probably a pain in the ass to get uh, a Java runtime of Java 9. I don't know actually, I've not updated my Java for a long time, maybe maybe it's not as annoying, but I do know the de development kit, which you might need for this to work ultimately, that that will be required. Uh, well, that's that's got its own implications, like... Oracle decided to change the license on Java 11 or whatever. Look, I didn't look into it, but it sounded annoying, so I'm not even going to go there. Instead, I'll just use a library, which does pretty much the same thing and more. Uh, it just basically adds a lot of methods to stream and similar classes. And these methods uh, are very useful. And they're useful in particular in one of the cases that we have here. So I made a playlist interface, which basically returns a stream of videos. Very interesting choice, you may say. Yes. This is borrowed mostly, the idea at least, from my previous attempt to write the YouTube sub box that I showed one of my videos back back then. And uh, the reason I just don't want to use a list is because playlists can be really big and long. There are some channels that have tens of thousands of videos, for example. And to get all of them, you can't make just a single request. YouTube forces pagination of around, I believe, 50 elements. So you get the 50 in the first page, and then you need to get 51 to 100, 101 to 150, and so on and so forth, all the way to the end. There's nothing you can do, you have to make those requests. In fact, the, and, and you can't even make them in parallel, because in order to make them, you need the token from the original request. So once you make a request for the first 50, you get the 50 and a token, which I will show later. And uh, then using that token, you can get the rest, the next step, and so on and so forth. And we use this logic to get all playlist pages inside of a stream. Get all playlist pages works like this. We iterate, starting with the first page, then we get the response being the response from the first page, and we try to get the next page. First page is just the same as trying to get the next page, but with a null token, which makes sense. When we do it the first time, we don't have any token. 
of trying to get a playlist page is just getting a playlist page and throwing an exception if something bad happens. Classic. And playlist pages, as you would imagine, you just call up playlist items, you get the snippet from the playlist items, you set the token, you set the ID, you set the maximum results, which is 50 in this case, and probably should put that down there we'll see and um you execute that request and you get the response which contains a list of items which then we so at, at this point you have a list of items and all of them are in a stream so you technically have a list of list of items which is why we have to flat map them to a stream so that they're just a list of items instead of being a list of list of items Whew. That's a mouthful. And then we turn each and every one of them into YouTube video. The good benefit of this is if your flat map isn't a terminal operation, then technically, if you just take the first 50 results from this stream, you're only going to make one call with the HTTP. And I believe that I've tested this in the previous YouTube sub box, and that's how it worked. You would make only one call as long as you didn't take more than 50. In most cases, we're going to need all the videos. As I've explained before, the videos, unfortunately, are not sorted in any way, and there's no way to sort them in a way that makes sense, for example, by release date. So for as long as you can't do that sorting, you're not going to be able to know which of the videos is first. The default ordering in uh, upload playlists, I believe, is the upload date, actually, which is not the same as release date. So that's why you need to fetch pretty much all of them, because I could upload a video, keep it for five years, release it five years later, and it would appear at the end of my playlist. And uh, that's only for the API, of course. If you look at the web page, it works properly, because it's YouTube, they, they just fucking suck sometimes. An interesting thing you may notice is that I put all of this into a normal class. Like YouTube Playlist, you may imagine, may be something that contains data. Instead, YouTube Playlist contains YouTube and a playlist ID. This is a very natural way to go about it because uh, when I think about getting a videos of a playlist, it definitely for me maps one-to-one -to, -one to let's say an HTTP request. So for example, if I went right now and opened the playlist on the web page, obviously it wouldn't give me a cached version of the web page. At least I hope not, hope to God. It would just fetch the playlist from the HTTP request you would see any new videos or any rearrangements of the playlist items in there uh, so this makes a lot of sense uh, but it also does have some implications uh, i'll talk about that later down with the other changes but the idea is that a playlist isn't something that contains uh, you know just a list of videos rather it is the ability it contains the ability to call up YouTube and get those videos at any given time. We may need to do some caching, but, you know, because if you keep calling this over and over again for some retarded reason, <laughs> I don't know why you would do it, but if you do it, then this would be a problem and it would keep calling, you know, the playlist for probably no reason because you probably expect the same ones, so you may have to cache it. Using a stream helps reinforce that as well, because a stream is something that you need to consume and use once. So it actually makes, again, a lot of sense that, you know, if you want to get playlist videos, you get a stream of them, and then you have to consume them, whatever. Ah, I believe this is a, what, a, yeah, no sue video. This is a pretend playlist which has just my how to cheat at os video in it and nothing else and this is more or less what you would get minus some things that we don't need anyway so you have items snippet and so on and so forth i chose to add the channel id and title because it's easy and it feels more authentic <laughs> if i ever decide oh i need those i know that they will come with the snippet which is good and as you can see the id is deep inside the resource id here is the video id quite deep indeed next thing is a bunch of fake videos so this uh thing is to mock a playlist which has 51 items and gives 50 per page which is the maximum 
And as you can see, it has an next page token. If you pass in that token, you will get the one last item, which incidentally is going to be this item again, because that's just simple. And all of these are just the same video 50 times. Here's the playlist items, very trivial. So if, if you, well, it would probably be best to show the test first, so, so you get what's going on here. So you have obviously no input test. We have the empty playlist, which has no videos. We have the small playlist, which has just the OS video. And we have the massive playlist, which has 51 videos, exactly 50 of fake video, which that's basically nothing, and exactly one also video. Yeah! And uh, we achieved this, as you can see, by mocking uh, also video under playlist city small, also video again under playlist city massive and a page token, and uh, playlist page one, which is the 50 fake. Uh, under just massive without a page token. It leads to this being retrieved with the first request and this with the second. And then if it's something else, we return nothing. You get nothing, sir. Nothing at all. And that's it for this request. But I didn't stop here. Because obviously, if you're going to do this, you also need to support deleted and private playlists. If you notice here, I have some examples which you can try. I created a private playlist on my own channel and it's empty but it's private and you can't access it unless you log into my channel. Quite simple. This is a playlist that has been deleted due to the channel associated with it being deleted. Which is quite interesting that it counts as deleted, but that could be just a thing. It may not necessarily mean anything. The idea is basically that you could pick up a playlist, but then let's say that channel gets deleted the next moment for some reason. It gets fucking three copyright strikes removed from the fucking platform, although they actually don't do that anymore. I think for copyright strikes, you get actually about a week of notice to do something about it, if my in intel is correct. And obviously, if you're watching this much later down the line, not at this particular date, then it could be complete bonkers. But the point is, that's a deleted playlist. And this is just a playlist for this series. So, uh, I did my homework, is what I'm trying to say. Yeah. Don't ask where I got a playlist from a deleted channel. It's confidential. No, it isn't. But uh, I won't tell you anyway. One thing that I uh, realized, of course, that the way to handle this is by catching specifically Google JSON spawn exception, which is thrown by the execute method if the response is something like uh, this. So it's an error which contains an array of errors and the code and message. We used this before for the quota exceeded test. Yeah, in that case, I decided, okay, I'll get the details, which is a special method of this exception, which prints out information about what happened from that JSON. That's, that's all that this does is give more information for now. To get the specific errors, I used the playlist IDs that I showed inside the YouTube API spike to just see what happens. And I found out what happens. This is the playlist uh, not authorized. So this is when it's a private playlist. And I fixed up the quota exceeded message because I had forgotten to put it inside an error a JSON object, which is a horrible mistake. And I added two more mocks for this deleted playlist, playlist deleted, 404 not found, private playlist. For three and the tests now are here as you can see YouTube playlist deleted forget legal state legal state and that's that for this particular change next up I added playlist items yeah so so this is quite trivial I fixed this up to be more in line with what you actually get I don't know where I got that quote exceeded I was just going crazy when I wrote that obviously and I added uh, playlist items to our, uh, you could call this a test suit if you want. It's, it's really just a parameterized test. And now we know that this particular case also will handle quote exceeded, which is good because that's what we want it to do. But I realized as I reading this, of course, we, this mechanism is still kind of shit because legal state is just too random. So we add an explicit exception called the YouTube warning exception. And I don't know if the name is going to stick, 
but we'll go with it. I'll talk about why I placed this to do in a moment, but the point is that instead of just throwing a legal state exception once we get this, I will throw instead a warning exception. The same thing here, the warning exception is thrown instead of this convoluted thing. But as you can see, here we catch an IO exception and turn it into a legal state exception because it's in the middle of a get videos call. I, and, and, and this is where the dilemma comes in. Do I, do I keep this IO exception here? Then in order to be consistent, I would have to also put it here for this get videos call. On the flip side, if I don't want to put it here because it's kind of annoying to have something like that on a stream, really annoying, then this IO exception doesn't make sense either because I'm already wrapping one of those exceptions away anyway. So I'll see, maybe I'll just invent a whole new exception for it and it will be a whole different uh, bag of uh, thorns up my arse. But we'll see, for now this is sufficient for our purposes, but it's something I'm looking at and probably something that will change. The actual exception is just a runtime exception that uh, can only be created by giving it a Google JSON response exception, which is used to derive the message and the cause. Just in case you're up to some funny business, get some null pointer exceptions thrown, motherfucker. You can add null in this, it's not allowed. And uh, then we just get the details. If there are no details, which can actually happen if the JSON is malformed somehow, which is what I found out when I tried to use my quota exceeded, which was malformed, then we will just say that YouTube didn't give us any error description for some reason. Otherwise, we'll just print whatever we have in the details of the JSON error. And with this, all the tests, including the parameterized test and the two tests that we added to the playlist tests, now use YouTube warning exception instead of illegal state exception. I created this test, obviously, to test the YouTube warning exception itself. And I decided that the easiest way to do it is two things. Uh, well, we need one without details and one with details, and the easiest way to do with details is to just perform mock call, which throws the exception. Because why bother going through convoluted ways when you can just do this? It's it's quick and simple, though it maybe slightly appear cumbersome. And then I started cleaning up the code. So first thing that I cleaned up is that YouTube API key should no longer be added to random URLs. What do I mean? Remember in the last episode I believe we added this interceptor which will make sure that our YouTube API requests have the YouTube API key. What I didn't consider at the time is that it will also append the YouTube API key to every other possible URL. This is actually present in the test if you see. Originally we used the basic request and uh, basic request is something like google.com in our OGA HTTP mocks, and it would add the key to google.com. That doesn't seem like a good idea, so I decided to, to also add a check to make sure that uh, we only add the key if it's needed, and it's only needed if it's a YouTube API request and it doesn't already have the key. So that's the idea. We determined the UTA API request by the API host and the API path. And after that, I just went on a autistic renaming spree where I tried to find the best way to name all of this. I settled for this. We add API key to the request. API key is added only if you need the API key. And if we need it, we just set it instead of just add it. Needing is only for API requests and only if you don't already have it. And setting sets API key parameter on the URL. Perfection. I don't think you can get much more perfect than this. So that's that's the last day's work in a nutshell for today. At least I hope I have the energy still to continue. I'm going to try and connect the uh, currently the channel and the playlist video technically into one. In other words, to make it so that you can get the playlist which contains the channel's videos immediately as soon as you have a channel because that makes sense to me you know if i have the time i will also try to integrate all of this into our main class which will probably require quite a bit of adjustment to support all these new shenanigans 
Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you later.